Good morning. Today we're going to talk about my decision uh, process in searching for and possibly buying a sailboat. So the first step I made was to look at all the sailboat manufacturers in Wikipedia. And the two things that I'm mainly concerned about are that it has a full keel and that it has a keel mast. So all those sailboat manufacturers are listed. And although I really liked the Amel yachts, it didn't have a full keel. The Bayfield Boatyard did. And as you can see, there's a couple of Bayfields within a decent size range. I'm not particularly fond of very large boats because I'll be doing solo sailing. And too small um, makes it feel more like a toy. So I'm looking at the 30s to 40s foot range. forward. The Bristol did have a keel mass, I mean a full keel, but it did not have a full keel mass. The Cabo Rico, which I do love this boat, it's a beautiful boat, both has a full keel and a keel mass and it comes in the 34 and 36 foot range. Cape Dory has four boats within my range. The Hans Christian has two, 36 foot and 38 foot. Hinkley has the Hinkley Pilot 35. That's a pretty nice looking boat. And the Island Packet has quite a few. Unfortunately, the Pacific Seacraft did have a full keel, but it did not have a keel mass. So that was my first step. I took those that um, did meet my requirements and I moved them forward to a, a further study. More details. Um, I put the years, the length overall, the waterline length, the beam and draft. I took um, notice of the displacement, the ballast, the type of ship that it is, and the important one was the total sail area, the auxiliary power, what kind of engine it is, fuel capacity, water capacity, and then I made some comments. This was a tough choice. I really wanted to um, narrow down based on what kind of sailing I want to do. Like I said, I'm going to be doing solo sailing. So one of the things that was very important to me was the total sail. Just by looking at these numbers, and this is a square footage of sail. Some of these numbers are very high. That is a lot of sail for one person to handle. So I did narrow down quite a few. So I did narrow down quite a bit just by the total sail area. Another thing that was important to me was the fuel capacity and water capacity. 
if you're going to be out there cruising for a while, you're going to run out of water very quickly if all you have is 20 gallons. Also, your fuel capacity. I don't wish to run out of fuel out in the, uh, the deep blue sea. And that seems to be the main two reasons why I discarded some of these sail boats. Even though they were beautiful boats, there wasn't enough fuel capacity, water capacity, or too much sail for one person. So unfortunately, I lost my really nice Cabo Rico. I really like that boat. The Hans Christians and the Hinkley. And the Bayfields had too little capacity for fuel and water. Maybe once I get more comfortable, I can handle more sail and put the Cabo Rico back onto my list. But for now, the Cape Dories and the Island Packets are the two that survived the process. So now I'm getting really, really picky. I noted the prices that I found in um, one of the websites. I forgot the name to it now. I did a lot of research. And what I found was the island packets, for one, they're very expensive. I guess they're trendy. But they all seem to have chain plate issues. I'm not sure I understood it properly. <clears throat> and I don't profess to be a professional at this. But it seems like the chain plates were embedded inside the actual boat, which makes them very difficult to get to for repairs. But if you have any sort of leakage, there's nowhere for the water to drain to or dry. So it causes a fatal flaw, in my opinion, um, a very expensive fatal flaw. And it seems to be in the older boats. I think the newer ones were corrected. But of course, newer boats means higher price. So if I'm going to compare the two that are very, very similar, and the Cape Dories don't seem to have that fatal flaw, it's kind of a no-brainer. Now, looking at the 30 foot, a 31 foot, 33 foot, and a 36 foot Cape Dories, the prices were not that different. We're looking at 20s and 30s, and the very high ones, 40s and 60s. That's not a bad price range. So if you can have the basically the same price range, I'm not interested in the smaller one. I would take the, the top two. <clears throat> it's a nice, simple boat. I didn't see any issues in the pictures anyway. And I didn't read anything bad about them in any of the websites that I researched. So just by this basic logic, my boat is going to be a Cape Dory, either a 33 or a 36 footer. And just a quick view, I found one in Port Charlotte. I didn't find the name. Loki is docked in Annapolis, Maryland. Sea Arrow is docked in Georgetown, Maine. Sirius is in Annapolis, Maryland, and it's the only one that had this electric engine. I really, really loved this concept. Barbara's in Texas. And two no-namers are in Oriental, North Carolina and Casa Rio Marina Mayo in Maryland. So it's time to start checking them out, um, either through video or through driving. And it looks like I'm really interested in this series above the others. So I might focus my videos here and use this, the rest as comparison. So now that I've gone through my logic, um, I'll leave it to you professionals out there to criticize, give me some um, feedback. Before I make the purchase, I want to be real sure that this is my boat. 
So be sure to leave me your comments. Let me, let me know what you guys think. And I appreciate all your assistance. Thank you all.